Someone close to you, a family member, a coworker, a friend, may be dealing with mental illness. Mental health problems are common, but help is available. ABC7 medical contributor Dr. Okachika Alozi with Sun Shed Life Health joins me now. Dr. Alozi, yeah. how many people in the U.S. are affected by mental so it's about one in five, right? And so those numbers vary across the board. I think the most recent data we have from NAMI, which we'll talk about later, is about one in five. And it's not just that it's one in five Americans. The frightening and sort of scary thing is that one in six children can have this, right? And so half of all chronic mental illness begins at the age of 14. Really important that if you have a child that's struggling in school, in life, you want to have a conversation with a psychiatrist or a physician as quickly as possible. And then, you know, what's really scary is that I wish that wasn't enough. More than half of all Americans will be diagnosed with a mental health disorder in their lifetime. And I think that's where we really need to sort of focus in on. And while treatment is available, not everyone's getting the help they need. Yeah, that, and that's also very frustrating. One of the problems with getting help is the ability to get help, right? And it has far-reaching implications, right? We, we just assume that when we call people quote-unquote crazy and that's not the right word to use, that people are just not going to seek care. But even then, they can actually lose jobs, right? Lose sleep, losing jobs, divorce. There's a host of things that mental health brings and it reaches across the spectrum of our society. And, and another statistic there, 8.4 million people in the U.S. spend an average of 32 hours a week providing unpaid care to an adult with a mental or emotional health issue. Yeah, again, so you have caretakers of people that have such debilitating anxiety or debilitating depression that they just can't engage. And so they need somebody to help them get that care at home. And that's really sad. Now, treatment, mm -hmm. does it help the majority of people? It does. And so the thing about treatment is that it has evolved over time. Once upon a time, we talked about electric shock. Then we talked about medications. Then we talked about putting people in homes or sanitariums. We're way past that now, right? There are medications. We're just cognitive behavioral therapy, identifying what your triggers are, talking to somebody and engaging. And it's not just in person. I mean, COVID, what COVID has shown us is that we can do a lot of these things online. And there's access to a lot of these things for people. So what are the top reasons for people not seeking treatment to begin with? Ooh, that's a big unbundling right there. So I think the biggest thing is stigma. And it doesn't surprise us, right? Again, we use these sort of catchphrases for people that have mental health that are derogatory. That doesn't help people want to go seek help. People are de novo embarrassed, right? They're ashamed that they are struggling, right? And I think that's the biggest thing, that perceived stigma. And you know, the frightening and sort of frustrating thing for me is that in our communities, ethnic minority communities, young men, that's where that is especially. And hey, we have a military community here and that affects them as well. The other problem, and I did say that there are resources, but again, you have to be insured for most of them, right? And so that out-of-pocket cost, if you want to go get an app, is very high. And then just lack of access. If you're having a mental health crisis, I know it says longer than a week. I see it now at about 30 days for people to get in. And then we'll talk about this on the next slide, but people just don't know, all right? And so having these conversations is critical. If there's anything I would tell anybody that's listening now or in the future, don't be embarrassed, don't be scared, and don't be ashamed. We're all struggling. Life is hard, and there's a lot of things and a lot of resources in our community, like the slide on the screen, that are available to them. That's right, Emergence Health Network, NAMI of El Paso, El Paso Child Guidance Center, Project Vita, and of course, the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline and the Crisis Text Line are always there 24-7. Absolutely. All right, Dr. Okachika Lozi, ABC7 Medical Contributor, thank you, sir. Thank you, Mark.